What's on, ladies and gentlemen? My name's Ross. I like games. And today, we need to take a little bit of a look at some new Marvel Champions cards. Now, as has been the case with these new cards recently, these were all revealed by lovely content creators. And you know the deal by now. They are showing off these cards, they are people that are pushing the game, that are making the game better, that are making the game more popular. They are doing good things to push the game that we love, so let's give them a little bit of love. There will be a bunch of links in the description to each of their individual reveals. Could I please ask that you go and check them out? That would be lovely. So starting off with a card that I'm most excited about, Spider-Girl. Although I'll be honest, I'm, I'm talking because I love these spider characters generally. Now Spider-Girl was revealed by 1-2-Punchboard.com. And what we've got here is a two-cost aggression ally. So pop it into them, their aggression decks. And what we've got is Thwart of 1 with 1 residual damage. Attack of 2 with 1 residual damage. And two health. So essentially the thwart is low, the attack is quite nice, and if you use her twice, she goes away. Okay. I mean, to be fair, using this to do two damage while taking one yourself and then blocking a big attack, assuming it doesn't have overkill, that would be a pretty good use for a two-cost ally. I'd feel like I'd got my resources worth. But wait, there's more. After you play Spider-Girl from your hand, stun and confuse a minion. This is quite nice. For those newer players, stun means the next time the minion would attack, you just remove the stun counter instead. As a ruling note here, you do not actually have an attack, so anything that would happen when they attack doesn't happen because they're not attacking, you're just removing the stun counter. And confusion is exactly the same thing, except it is for threat. So the next time they would scheme, you just remove the confusion counter instead. It's quite nice. It's very cool. Now, obviously, I would like this a lot more, and I'm assuming you guys would as well, if it could do this to the villain. But then, as a two-cost, that would be, like, full-on broken. I would love to be able to essentially... Because here's the thing, right? If you play this properly, you can essentially get two turns of this ally not doing anything. Which is kind of ridiculous. Because you're in hero mode, they go to attack. Oh no, they can't attack, they're stunned. Then you go to alter ego mode, so they go to scheme and they're like, oh no, I'm confused. And you get two turns off. And maybe this is some phenomenal ally. I mean, we've all talked about Ronan the Accuser. And how Ronan the Accuser, that was a free print and play set. I did a video about it, link in the description. How that really was kind of over the top. And as a minion, it is probably the most harsh one we've seen so far. So against a minion of that level of meanness, this is phenomenal. Against other minions, a lot of the times this isn't going to be terribly worth it. There's going to be plenty of times there are weak little minions. And I'm not saying this isn't going to help. Obviously, this is going to help. But I'm saying you're not going to get as much value going after uh, private security who has zero scheme and one attack. And who honestly you kind of have to take out sooner rather than later because it's got guard and stops you attacking the villain. You're not going to get as much value attacking one of those. I like Spider-Girl as a character. This card seems rather situational. There will be sometimes it is absolutely over the top phenomenally brilliantly awesome. And there will be plenty of other times where... It's fine and useful, but it's not. you're not always going to get full value is what I'm saying here. Moving on, we've got another ally to look at. We can have a gander at Goliath, which was shown off by the lovely MCM podcast, Marvel Champions Monthly. Lovely dudes. Good podcast. Now, Goliath is a leadership ally, and what we've got is two thwart with one consequential damage and one attack with two consequential damage, Four health on a four cost ally is fine. Now, here's the thing. I mean, we've talked about a few minions lately. Two thwart, taking one damage, good, we like it. That is an efficient use of resources, go team. One attack, one consequential damage is kind of vanilla and a bit rubbish and we're not loving it. One attack with two consequential damage is basically akin to going, yeah, don't use this, it's garbage. But wait, there's more. Action! Goliath gets plus four attack until the end of the phase. At the end of the phase, discard Goliath. And it's limited to once per phase to stop you stacking it and going dumb. I love this. This is brilliant. Essentially, Goliath is not an attacker 
until he's ready to go. At the time where you're going to get rid of Goliath, then he becomes an attacker, and you've got a five attack ally. Five attack ally is kind of ridiculously over the top stupid. Like, we had Hulk as an ally, and Hulk is super strong. And we expect Hulk to be one of the biggest and baddest ones around. Attack of three, taking one damage back. And that's good, incidentally. That is a big, powerful Hulk. Now, to be fair, Hulk, after you attack, you get to either deal two damage to an enemy, one damage to each character, discard Hulk, or all of the above. So there were other things going on with Hulk, plus the five health was not to be laughed at. But then again, don't forget that you got to, well, assuming an even number of icons, which we're not going to have a 50% chance of actually discarding it. In reality, it's much less than that, but you get what I mean. There are going to be plenty of times you end up discarding it and it goes badly and boo hiss, etc. My point here is, four attack on a minion is great. So, the roadmap with Goliath seems fairly obvious to me. You thwart for two, thwart for two, thwart for two. Oh, I'm about to go if I use Goliath again. At that stage, I can get an attack for five, and the two consequential damage doesn't matter. I'm going down anyway. That's when I think it's kind of awesome. And I really do think this is kind of awesome. I love Goliath. It is expensive, the card. You're talking a four cost. It's not great. But you should be, for those four resources, thwarting for six and then attacking for five. I'm sorry. That, that kind of makes me happy. Now... Here's one we haven't seen before. The lovely folks over at the Card Game Cooperative have gone and revealed a side scheme. How cool is that? Now, it is a side scheme from Hawkeye's Nemesis deck. And what we've got is it's got an acceleration token, which means you put an extra threat on the main scheme at the start of the villain phase, which is not ideal. And it starts with 5 fret on it, which is quite high if I'm honest with you. We generally see them starting with a little bit less. And when it's revealed, the Clint Barton player searches a hand, deck, discard pile and play area for Mockingbird. And places her face up beneath this card. When this stage is defeated, return Mockingbird to her owner's hand. Now... This can actually end up being really good for you in a weird kind of way. Now, don't get me wrong. If Mockingbird is currently in play, then Mockingbird comes out of play and then goes under the side scheme and then you get it back. But you've got to pay free to play the card and it's just kind of awkward. But if Mockingbird's in your deck or discard pile, you're not playing it this turn anyway. You don't have her available. The card isn't available. So this puts Mockingbird under the side scheme, and then when the side scheme is defeated, you get Mockingbird into your hand, ready to play. And we talked about Mockingbird in a recent video. Two attack or fought with one damage each, yes. When the villain initiates an attack against you, you spend one resource of any type and return Mockingbird to your hand, preventing all damage from the attack. Which is kind of awesome. Now, it is worth bearing in mind that because of that skill, when Mockingbird hits the play area, she will stay in play far better than your average ally. Because when she gets defeated, well, you, you can basically keep pinging her back to your hand. And that's going to keep her in play a lot better than your average ally. So it is more likely she'll be in play compared to a regular ally. But this could come out super early when you haven't drawn into Mockingbird. Or after you had to thwart and you had to discard Mockingbird even though you didn't want to. But you desperately needed that to thwart. Or things along those lines. Don't get me wrong, if she's in play, this is going to be super annoying. The acceleration token sucks. The five threat starting on it is high. Not to mention the free boost icons, which aren't exactly a walk in the park. But honestly here, I, 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 can, I can see this. There is actually over on when the Card Game Cooperative did the reveal, they have confirmed here that while Mockingbird is face up under the side scheme, she is in play, but under no player's control. I.e., if somebody is playing the basic Mockingbird from the core set, they would not be able to put her into play, even though Mockingbird is not actually in play, because Mockingbird is in play, she's just not actually under anyone's control. There we go. I think as a side scheme, this is harsh, 
Acceleration token, five threat, three boost icons, etc. But I can see a really big bonus here because Mockingbird's a good ally and this can help you get her into play or back into play quite easily. Stop me if I've missed something here, but even though it's a harsh side scheme, I can see pretty big advantages. And finally, the lovely folks over at the Hall of Cards over on YouTube has gone and shown us Cable Arrow, a lovely Hawkeye event. It's an arrow. Hawkeye, I'll be honest with you, right? Hawkeye is kind of all built around his arrows. That's kind of what he does. That is the hook of the character. So, Hawkeye, the hero card, has got an action that exhausts Hawkeye to ready Hawkeye's bow. Okay. There must be something going on with Hawkeye's bow, right? There is. Your hero gets plus one attack and each of your arrow attacks gains ranged. That is to say, they ignore retaliate. And we've previously seen Explosive Arrow, which exhausts Hawkeye's bow, and you deal three damage to the villain and each minion engaged with a player in play. Well, Cable Arrow is a one-cost event with a hero action whereby you exhaust Hawkeye's bow and ignore free threat from a scheme ignoring any crisis icons in play so we've got the same thing going on here whereby you've got to exhaust hawkeye's bow in order to play these arrows we've seen two now it looks very very much like the hook of hawkeye essentially is you've got a lot of really cheap arrow cards that are really good you know one cost to remove free threat is dumb we'll get to the crisis icons in a moment but you can only play it if you exhaust hawkeye's bow but then again you can use hawkeye to ready your bow etc etc and You've got a character which is all built around all of his bow and arrows and all of that stuff, which, honestly, right, it should be. That makes perfect sense to me. <laughs> it's Hawkeye. What else would you have? Now, in terms of getting around Crisis Icons, it's awesome. Crisis Icon is the one we see on side schemes that basically says you cannot get rid of threat on the main scheme until you've defeated the side scheme which of course is terrible because sometimes the main scheme might be close enough that it's going to be completed and you've got just enough for to stop that but you can't actually do it because you cannot take away the crisis side scheme and get the main scheme low enough well this allows you to just bypass that go straight to the main scheme it's phenomenal for one cost but you've got the whole exhaust in the bow thing going on as well. I'll be honest with you. This seems cool. I don't know if Hawkeye looks like my favorite character we're getting. But I do know that these arrows look very, very good. Very, very powerful. And at the end of the day, we got a nice little theme going on with Hawkeye. And that makes me rather happy indeed. But now, ladies and gentlemen, I want to hear from you guys. I want to know about all of these cards. I want to know your thoughts, your theories, your opinions. I want to know what you want to tell me. So go nuts in the comment section, but be nice. And then make sure you like this video, subscribe to this channel, follow me on Twitter at the Wassy. That's where we talk Marvel Champions and a bunch of other card games. And please do consider checking out patreon.com slash ptcgradio, where you can support the channel, get some bonus podcasts and all kinds of fun stuff. But by far the most important thing as always, look after yourselves till next time, would ya? Thank you very much for watching. My name's Ross, and you've been watching Wassy Plays.